Hello, this is Community Unity Now, the D Tycoon Show. Bill Morton, President of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce, can't be with us today. I am Trudy Leong, Administrator of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce. And our very special guest today is Larry Gardner. He's an independent artist and community activist in Rogers Park. Welcome, Larry. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. How about yourself? Good. Hello, TV land. <laughs> so let us know uh, what you are doing as an independent artist uh, and helping the community in Rogers Park. Uh, well, I like to take, you know, kind of my own experiences uh, to relate to, you know, the dynamic of violence growing in the younger community. Uh, there is a disconnect uh, between the, you know, generations. So they need guidance. And the way that I see fit is to kind of meet them on their playing ground, meet them on their level, and what better level than that is entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, music is a language that speaks uh, to everyone. Yes, it's universal. It's universal. So sometimes you might see uh, like violence in, uh, in the language of the music. Uh, do you uh, try to steer the youth away from that and into something else? Well, yes, uh, it seems that more youth are angrier uh, these days and again lost. They don't seem to have like a grasp on where they want to go or even how to get started with it. So uh, be again, meeting them on their playing field, being able to kind of relate, find something that is going to be a common denominator or a basis. And from what that is, it seems like music, uh, hence, you know, kind of the rise and the different, you know, topics and stuff that goes on with the music these days um it's kind of it's kind of just you know putting a smoke screen over their bigger issues at hand and it's kind of time to just start you know helping the youth get a grasp on certain realities and being able to be as strong as they need to be to get through that i know it's easier said than done but again meeting them on their playing field and being able to make it a little bit more digestible for them is the idea. You mean the issues that they are facing in their life that make yes. it more digestible and then yes. have them uh, uh, concentrate, uh, maybe even apply those issues to their music? Yes, yes. Uh, artist development, uh, uh, being able to create a hub, a network uh, for that to happen is kind of where we're leaning to. Uh, being able to again have something a little bit more constructive for the youth these days instead of you know not giving them something to actually create a hobby or even some type of career behind because again uh you know i would me myself i wouldn't consider work work if you love doing what you're doing every day so uh being able to show them different things and when and in different ways to network and uh, be creative you know uh, like they say idle hands do the devil's work so being able to again make them a little bit more creative giving them a little bit more structure uh, or baseline for the youth so are the youth uh, just trying to find an outlet and trying to uh, 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 apply their creative energy or are they uh, actually getting advice uh, trying to find advice about how to uh, enter the music industry uh, some some do so again some there are some creatives who have that opportunity to to be able to express themselves artistically mm -hmm. and then there are some who are just looking for an outlet who really don't have a voice yet but they're trying to find a, a way to get the their their point across or somewhat uh, venting or being able to get their feelings out there so it's more or less being able to redirect your energy Mm -hmm. more than anything. So you are a mentor to uh, kids, to some youth? Some youth, yes, mm -hmm. some youth. Uh, right now, I just kind of deal with the younger adults. Uh, but as of right now, you know, due to the fact that uh, I have uh, younger siblings and younger cousins and things like that, I kind of uh, find my niche between them, use them as my muses and kind of see you know, the trendier and topics and what's actually going on in the younger community these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you uh, try to address the rise in violent, uh, violence among youth uh, uh, to what you're doing? Again, it's, it's being able to show that you can redirect 
whatever you're going through in, in a more positive light, more positive aspect. Uh, again, you know, nowadays you have a lot of people who are just talking about, you know, or shedding light on the, the, the kind of negativity of, you know, gang life and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other things that come across that, like you never hear about the story of the guy who's trying to actually make it uh, despite the situation that they're given and still trying to re uh, remain legitimate in, it, in his endeavors and uh, positive in his community. There's different aspects, there's different levels to it. And the way I see it is kind of redirecting that lens towards a more in-depth story of struggle uh, rather than just, you know, being able to scratch the surface. You know, everybody likes the glitz and glory and the glamour. Everybody likes the tough guy, whatnot. But if you kind of redirect that lens and and and, and kind of change the storyline, that's basically what we're aiming mm -hmm. for. Can you give us an example of someone you helped up before and after? Uh, yes. Um, quite a few young ones there. Uh, a group, uh, they were a group uh, of individuals who, you know, had different outlooks, out, uh, different outtakes of life, different experiences. So I've sat down with them for years, almost better part of 10 years, close to a decade, mm -hmm. helping them just kind of, again, redirect their energy and get their voices a little bit more clear or their story, their message a little bit more clear and digestible uh, to the community. That way they can, you know, uh, not only thrive in their creativity, but also have a hub to thrive within. Mm -hmm. So you feel that uh, sometimes the violence in music is uh, uh, the entertainment industry uh, uh, imposing that again uh, onto the community rather than it's actually what the community wants. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, like they say, you know, different things sell. Uh, especially when it comes to entertainment that if you're green you're green and sometimes you're green uh, within a certain aspect and that certain aspect just so happens to become the trending topic among the uh, the younger you know society so if it, it, it's lucrative so you know mm -hmm. money talks these days and sometimes uh, again I think that needs to be kind of redirected that lens needs to be redirected you know, because everybody wants to get the bag. Everybody's in it for the bag. But mm -hmm. if you actually take upon the or grasp the actual artistic uh, values behind entertainment and, you know, music and things like that and actually find your niche in it or your, your message that you want, your voice, however you want to perceive it, if you're able to do that and, you know, kind of shed a positive light on not only how you made it, but your surroundings, your experiences, and possibly help save the next generation. Again, that's where that, uh, you know, kind of filling in the generational gap comes in. Mm -hmm. So how hard is it to um, use, uh, to guide the youth into uh, <laughs> using music, like maybe uh, to deal with uh, bullying or dealing with uh, uh, other peer pressure? Uh, because you know, ch truths hurt and sometimes tapping into that that area or that that mindset or being able to go as deep in depth with whatever pain or experiences are had and being able to art artistically express that or positively express that without you know losing yourself too much uh it's kind of hard <laughs> but uh it's it's two it's a two each its own thing so again as long as you try and find a common denominator a baseline uh you know a routine that may help build uh and continuously build values upon that person's outlook on life then i, I have more power there's more power to it like i feel kind of relieved or at least uh, giving that person the tools to make the right decisions. You mentioned uh, uh, the green earlier. So did you mean like the green newbie green or the money green? That's money affected. green. Yeah, money, money green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> money green. Yes. <laughs> so how difficult is it for an artist to make it like uh, to fill the niche and then uh, and then to not uh, concentrate on violence? Uh, how hard is it to uh, make it in the music industry without going with the rest of them? It's hard because 
you know, again, if something's green, if something's trending, sometimes they don't want you to stray away from it and they want you to ride it out as long as possible and get as much money as possible and then you can turn around and do what you want. But sometimes people lose themselves in that aspect as well and then it's kind of hard to come back or get back to what they usually do or how they usually were uh, because they're so either so used to the lifestyle or they're so used to the music and how it kind of makes them feel sometimes which is a good thing but is it really something that you want uh, long, uh, long term mm -hmm. so building our positive artistic longevity is, is a is a, uh, a f like a fair direction that we're headed uh, so being able again being able to build within the aspect of generating positive energy and laying that groundwork and building that hub or that network for others to kind of follow through so losing yourself you meant like uh, uh, losing the values and then mm -hmm. going with the flow in order to make money and it's hard to come back after after uh, uh, kind of losing a part of your soul is that what you yes meant? because money yeah, money uh, money <laughs> is the root of all evil to me well to me to each his own because to me money is you know you it gives you the fork in the road option you know you can either go this way and uh you sacrifice your morality your 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 uh principles and things like that or you can go this way and kind of you know take the road less traveled and even those may be a little bit harder to pursue at, at the end of the day is anything that is harder to acquire is worth acquiring because at that point in time becomes an asset not only to you but to the network or the environment or the message you're trying to bring so it's the group that uh, you're trying to mentor and then uh, trying to get <coughs> uh, uh, get help them uh, uh, achieve their art it's the, it's the, would they need to uh, go go with uh, become independent artists instead of like uh, record label artists because it seems as if uh, uh, what what you're suggesting uh, would not be would not be uh, saleable but uh, it's something that is a niche that uh, that you have to be patient to build is that what you're trying to do yes it's a uh, it's, it's it takes patience to build something worth having and uh, my motto is don't 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 stagnate yourself don't don't be stagnant uh, because of other people's views but also don't be uh, don't not be a risk taker because of other people's views so in term it's uh it's more of of again finding your niche understanding who you are as a person and then growing within that aspect uh and 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 you know being able to to solidify yourself in what you're doing and, and making it lucrative you can still do so again it it, it takes time and so a uh, road less traveled but speaking on what you mentioned earlier am i saying kind of uh dilute your more like don't go with a mainstream or a record label or anything like that no 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 that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is self-knowledge knowing yourself what you've been through and how you really want to relay your message and how you want to grow within that message uh sometimes you know you can you and you can do that with a major label you can you just got to uh, first of all, do your homework. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't don't sign it into anything that's going to have you paying more or giving more of your time than needed, uh, and 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 use it to your advantage, and grow from that, and and not only grow within yourself but grow your community. Mm -hmm. So, how do you find like-minded artists like you to uh, with whom to work and with, uh, with whom to work? And uh, uh, do you have uh, fellow artists that? Uh, are also trying to help uh, youth yes a uh, slight few i have a slight few right now it's, it's still growing it's still in the works you know uh like-mindedness is not as common these days <laughs> uh so uh especially during the COVID era you know it's uh but i digress the the main focus really is the people who i have now again are just a few of the building blocks needed to 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 execute the goals and at least start the race you know uh it, the finish line is still sought 
you know, but but it's still light at the end of the tunnel. It's still light at the end of the tunnel. It's just, you know, the race is still going. The marathon continues. Uh, not to take, I hope that's not a disclaimer or anything, but yeah, the marathon continues. How did you decide to uh, take this road and uh, to do what you do? Uh, what happened? Again, like-mindedness, uh, I figured, like, okay, so I grew up in the time, uh, you know, I'm an 80s baby, <laughs> so I grew up in the 90s, late 80s, so, you know, you knew, I grew up around in the time where you had to fight, where you had to at least be strong enough to to get through the day and, and you know, at least do what you had to do, you know, to, to become successful. So... You know, with that, I, I was uh, me saying that though. Going further, I wasn't like in the streets or anything. But you know, I was I was still a <laughs> a, wise, a, a, a whiz kid, a wise guy, if you would. <laughs> so uh, me and my friends, we would still be out, and you know, what came with that territory came with that territory. Um, so uh, again, just taking those experiences and kind of relay, putting myself, empathizing with some of these younger artists and putting myself in their shoes kind of, um, or at least understanding the dynamic of the situation in which they're in and kind of finding again, that common denominator to where whatever I'm saying is a little bit digestible to them. I don't like being too preachy, but at least, at least what I'm saying, it, it gets through to you in a positive manner. When uh, uh, that was uh, almost my next question, uh, how, uh, how, uh, how hard is it to reach the youth? Uh, what, what, what's your advice? Uh, is, it, uh, is, is what you're saying f very far from uh, what, they're, what they believe in, or is it, uh, or is it what they, uh, are, are you able to like, uh, maybe touch what they are actually hoping? You, from what I can see nowadays, the youth just needs a voice and direction, a voice and direction, uh, a, a baseline for them to be able to create or become who they, you know, want to solidify themselves to be in a positive manner uh, and, and grow and, 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 and pass on that positivity. Uh, the disconnect between the youth and in the older generations d uh, is a problem because you know you, you never one would never understand the other one would never experience what the other experienced uh, so there's just a big generational disconnect uh, don't live in the past and stuff like that YOLO stuff and all that like I, I mean I, I, I hear it is good for party scenes it's good for you know the the just the the baseline scratching the surface but you know, without, you know, the sayings that are, if you don't at least pay attention to the past, you're doomed to repeat it in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's, that's where it is. People need to kind of just come together and come up with that common, non common denominator, that baseline, because, you know, they say there's nothing new under the sun and different things, different trends or different ideas they kind of resurface and re and you know resurface every 10 years or so like that so but it being able to again kind of fill those voids and catch those generational disconnects mm -hmm. will help push when you say that the youth are disconnected disconnected from the uh earlier the last generation mm -hmm. are they are you meaning that they're disconnected from their parents or is it hard for you to reach them sometimes with uh, what you're uh, trying to help them with well again i grew up in the 80s 90s so i know some of the air mm -hmm. so some of the parents now like they grew up wanting to you know do what they wanted to do with some stuff like that and, you know certain things like that not really you know paying attention to the home leaving home things like that um so I think the generation now that's raising the gen the newer generation, uh, they're just raising them to kind of want what they want and 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 you know feel what they feel. Which I I mean good you know sometimes you gotta express that, but at the same time you gotta ha also kind of corral that because too much of uh you know if it's it's like a dam or the or the uh, you know. The Hoover Dam, uh, mm -hmm. 
it's big enough to hold everything, but if it broke down, everything would just flood. So it's just a buildup of being able to redirect energy and giving them the right tools and the right baseline to be filled with morals and do the right thing. When you uh, mentor the youth, uh, do you often even have to give them resources uh, to address uh, other problems that they're having? Yes, sometimes. That's a baseline. Tell, tell, what do you need to express? What, what is your message? So I kind of listen to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're like, back there. Mm -hmm. so when you um, uh, uh, try to mentor the youth, do you end up sometimes uh, uh, talking with the parents too, uh, becoming acquainted with the parents as well, that generation, or is it mostly just the youth? A little bit of both, again, because you got to get a good understanding of where the person is coming from and their environment and their experiences. So speaking to the parents one-on-one -on -one does help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then how, how do the youth connect with you? How, how do they find you? Uh, different social media platforms um, or, or, you know, they'll see me, you know, engaging with the community here and there on an off day or two just so you know <laughs> catching me at a store or something get, catching some information on the next event stuff like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when you um when you uh, like get 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 a new uh client well not a client but someone that you're going to mentor what's the most important thing to uh, to start off with well, just like uh, talking about the history, or do you go go into the music? How how do you build that connection? Who are you? That's the very first question. Who are you, mm -hmm. and where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. So once they give me that, I kind of get a good understanding of what's going on in their head, mm -hmm. and kind of a general baseline of. I know the the the, the storyline that they want to build from, or the brainstorm they want to build from. Mm -hmm. And is that the uh, the the uh, like the plot of uh, what their art will be, and the uh, and how how you uh, structure how you're going to mentor them? Yes, mm -hmm. because everybody is. Uh, th everybody learns different. Some people learn on the fly. Some people learn uh, uh, formatically. So just being able again to find that niche that common denominator for me to be able to express or get information or at least find some type of common ground and make it a little bit more digestible what about older artists like uh, non you do they come to you for help as well yes they do so i do have a few people who i'm working with who are wanting to uh, rejuvenate or reboot themselves back again so yes so are they uh, like you uh trying to like uh uh, be be a, a positive influence is uh, is that how uh, you connect with uh, with like minded people? Are they like you positively uh, inclined? Positively, positively inclined. Yes, yes. Different messages. Yes, the, are all of our messages the same? No, <laughs> mm. are all of our messages digestible in certain ways? No, but the f common denominator is the positivity behind it. Is is. Mm -hmm. the, the focus and how hard is it to find an audience uh, for for this positivity uh, still going it, it takes time uh, still going the the audience is uh, audience is broad and we're living in the, the microwave generation where everybody's attention span is like this so uh, being able to uh, relate or create content that will build uh, a good focal point for the people or make it digestible for the people as well Mm -hmm. is is what we're doing that's why we do the different content different times okay so if uh, people wanted to contact you for more information about how to uh, uh, be be an independent positive artist and uh, help you that they know how would they contact you uh, I give my email yeah, email, 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 is good. email uh, Latale lyrics that's L A T L Y R I C S at yahoo.com. Uh, you can email me. I can listen to certain things. Or if you Google me, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, look up um, certain things uh, social media wise. Leave a comment or two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or YouTube.
<laughs> okay, Larry Gardner, independent artist and community activist, thank you so much for joining us on Community Unity Now Today, the D Tycoon Show. I am Trudy Leong, Bill Morton, and I will be back next week. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great evening. Peace.